everyone welcome to gem kim now today's video is on liquid state and today we will deal with the first property of liquid that is vapor pressure of liquid state and this is an important topic with one derivation in it so let's start today's video but before starting if you have still not watched liquid state part 1 do watch it it will be helpful i will give the link in the description box now let us start now see what do we mean by vapor pressure. Suppose we take a container where there is a liquid but it is not fully filled with liquid. There is some space above liquid. So that container and that liquid gets the scope of having a vapor pressure by generation of vapor. Now to be very frank let's deal with the definition which we should know and properly understand. Now, if a quantity of pure liquid is placed in an evacuated container, that is, an uh, empty container having a volume greater than that of the liquid, that is, the volume occupied by the liquid is much lesser than the volume of the whole container, a portion of the liquid will evaporate so as to fill the remaining volume of the container with vapor. So, the remaining volume of the container will be filled with vapor of this liquid. Now, provided that some liquid remains after the equilibrium is established, that is not complete conversion of liquid to vapor, but some liquid is still present in this part. Now see, provided that some liquid remains after the equilibrium is established, the pressure of the vapor in the container is function of only temperature of the system. This vapor pressure which is generated from the vapor created by evaporation is only the function of temperature it is dependent on temperature the pressure developed is the vapor pressure of the liquid what we are going to learn about today which is the characteristic property of the liquid it increases rapidly with increase in temperature so as we increase our temperature of the system the amount of vapor increases and the pressure exerted by the vapor on the liquid gets increased now we have to know the states of interaction and the forces between the molecules present in the liquid state. Now let us see. Now see for this case a molecule present at the surface if we consider this molecule. A molecule present in the surface. This will experience force from the downward direction by the liquid molecules and sideways direction but there will be no force in the upward direction so it has less probability of being attracted downwards whereas if we consider another molecule in between the new liquid surface then it has force in all directions right so it will be attracted by other liquid molecules in all directions so within the bulk attraction on a molecule is more or less balanced from all directions but the molecule at the surface see the red one the molecule at the surface will experience much greater attraction inwards than towards the free space thus in order to pass into the vapor phase, phase this molecule the surface molecule must possess sufficient energy to overcome this force of attraction so that it can leave into the vapor phase so this is our vapor phase and this is our liquid phase right so it should have sufficient energy to go to the vapor phase so we will derive what amount of pressure and what amount of energy is required to develop a vapor pressure okay now let us see now molecules located at the surface we have understood that has higher probability to go at the vapor phase actually but when it has already gone to the vapor the vapor pressure which is developed is not saturated because there is an equilibrium between liquid and vapor state right so there is no ultimate saturation saturated vapor pressure when it occupies no further chance of additional pressure creation okay now let us see what are the two definitions important definitions 
normal boiling point and normal sublimation point. The temperature at which the vapor pressure, that is the pressure exerted by the vapor created from that liquid we have already seen is equal to 1 atm in the normal boiling point. This is known as the normal boiling point. It will be is. So, the temperature at which vapor pressure is equal to 1 atm is normal boiling point of the liquid. Whereas, in some cases, if solid reaches 1 atm at a temperature below the melting point of the solid, that is, it has already occupied a pressure of 1 atm, but still it has not melted, that is, it has not reached the melting point, then what happens? The solid sublimes, that is, it directly converts from solid to gas. And that kind of temperature is known as normal sublimation point. Now both of these parameters that is normal boiling point and normal sublimation point depends on pressure imposed upon the substance. How much pressure we are imposing on the substance. Now let us see our derivation. Now in this video we will derive an expression for the vapor pressure of the liquid. Now see, first we have already seen that within the bulk, the attraction on a molecule is more or less balanced from all direction already seen. But for a molecule on the surface, there would be much greater attraction inwards than that towards free surface, right? The liquid in order to pass into the vapor phase, the surface molecule must possess sufficient energy to overcome the force of attraction. Now we consider E to be the excess energy per gram mole okay to be possessed in order to overcome the force of attraction and vaporize to go to the vapor phase now see then the number of molecules that is we take as n1 okay having energy more than e so we consider a particle with n1 as the number of molecules which are going to the vapor phase with energy more than e now, we have already seen Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. This is already seen in kinetic theory of gases video. Please do watch it. If you have not still watched it, I will give the link in the description box. It will be helpful. Now, this expression particularly is being obtained from Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. Okay. Now, N1 equals to NL E to the power minus big E that is cap C by RT. This is the energy and divided by RT. R is the gas constant. Now NL is the number of molecules per centimeter cube of the liquid. Now if NG suppose we take as the number of molecules per cc that is centimeter cube of the vapor state then the rate of condensation of vapor molecules will be given by lambda dash NG that is lambda is taken to be a constant. Now at equilibrium rates of condensation and evaporation, the rate will be equal. That is, we know that this one, that is for the liquid state, this is the distribution. And for the vapor state, this is the distribution. So, we equalize this because rate of condensation and evaporation are nearly same. And we get this expression, right? This last one. Now, let us see what we do. On obtaining this expression, we assume that the gas which is obtained behaves as ideal vapor. That is ideal behavior for the gas. Now, we know P equals to CRT. Now, C is the concentration, right? Now, what we know P equals to PV equals to NRT, right? Now, P is can be written as N by VRT, right? Now, this N by V can be written as C, R, T. Okay. So, here this is written only. Now, see. N, G by N, 0 equal R, T. That is, we write concentration as the concentration of vapor phase divided by the Avogadro number. So, we get N, G's value from here. So, now we substitute this N, G value in this equation for P equals to NG RT by N0. From here we take the value of NG and substitute here and we get an expression like this. Now see this NL and lambda dash R by N0. That is these are all constant values. 
so we take it as lambda where lambda is a constant since nl is practically independent of temperature there is no dependence of temperature on the number of molecules per centimeter cube present in the liquid state now we take logarithm on both sides of this equation and we get this expression that is constant is being taken as a constant logarithm of some constant is also a constant so we get this constant and this one minus e by rt comes up because this is an exponential logarithm of exponential is the power into 1 plus ln t that is the temperature present in this expression now ln t when basically we know that temperature value is very large right while evaporation the temperature value becomes very large so the lnt value will be very small in that case so we can ignore this term and we get this expression this is the expression for the vapor pressure of the liquid which we need and we have to remember so derivation of this is very much important now we will deal with um, important topic that is how to measure the vapor pressure practically now this is an important and very important topic because while asking viva or while writing the questions of bsc chemistry we need this so how do we determine a number of methods have been employed to determine the vapor pressure of a liquid uh, but fairly we will use a ramsey young method which is more often contributed in this field so the experimental arrangement i will show so let us see this is the experimental arrangement now we see a strong world boiling tube that is this one this is a strong world boiling tube pro which is also pro provided with a side tube and its mouth that is its mouth that is this portion is closed by means of a rubber cork so this one this is black part is the rubber cork and this rubber cork has a thermometer that is this one and also a dropping funnel this is the dropping funnel now this dropping funnel is little bent at this down position the bulb of the thermometer is kept just above covered with a thin cotton wool wrap and always kept moist with the liquid to be studied here the liquid is taken now we see that the tap funnel supplies the liquid in small drops to keep the cotton wet that is from here the liquid is dropped into this cotton the liquid is dropped drop wise okay to this cotton to keep this cotton wet now what the boiling tube that is this one is kept immersed in a bath that is this one why it is kept into this the film of the liquid in the cotton wool evaporates by heat of radiation that is heat is produced in this water and the heat is radiated into this boiling tube from where this liquid present in the cotton evaporates now the vapor comes out from this tube now see the side tube is attached to an empty bottle and finally to a manometer this is the manometer basically right and here the air is provided to keep a pressure and pump is provided to keep a vacuum okay now see that in making a measurement the pressure is first reduced and the evaporation of liquid from the cotton wool takes place on decreasing the pressure at a given pressure a steady state is reached when the thermometer shows a constant reading and distillation from the surface of the thermometer bulb proceeds smoothly the manometric reading indicates the vapor pressure at that temperature and by regulating this pressure it is possible to measure vapor pressure at different temperatures this is how the determination of vapor pressure is done using ramsey and young apparatus okay now let us see our next topic now next topic is basically a little extension to this that is how can solid change to liquid liquid change to vapor and this is a change of state which we know from our previous knowledges and we will show it with the help of a phase diagram now we will first deal with liquid and vapor equilibrium right now see 
This is a phase diagram where here there is an equilibrium between solid and gas phase. Here an equilibrium between liquid and gas phase and this part or maybe this part also is in equilibrium with solid and liquid phase. This is clear from the diagram, right? Now see, when vapor pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure, boiling of liquid will start because energy throughout the liquid and vapor is same thermodynamically. No difference between the property of vapor and liquid in this time. And as they are energetically same, boiling occurs all throughout the liquid. At a temperature, boiling point of the liquid, vapor pressure, so we understand that at boiling point, the vapor pressure of the liquid is or the vapor pressure of the medium is equal to the atmospheric pressure. This is important to understand from this diagram. Now in details we will learn this diagram in the phase diagram chapter but here we will have only the knowledge about the vapor pressure. Now in the boiling point there is equal probability that the system may go to the liquid state or remain in the gaseous state. Okay. Now we need to identify the nature of the intermolecular attraction and interaction of liquid from these diagrams basically. Now, if pressure is increased, if pressure is more and more increased, boiling point gets increased. That is known as elevation of boiling point. And if, if pressure is decreased, that is P is decreased, then boiling point also gets decreased. That is depression of boiling point. Now, how long this behavior continues? That is, it continues basically to this point. That is, this is the critical point up to which this behavior continues. And after this critical point is reached, when this graph goes up and critical point is reached, there is no existence of either gas or liquid. Okay, until this there is an equilibrium, but after that no solid, uh, no liquid or gas. Now, a point is there in the graph which is the triple point. That is on decreasing pressure and temperature from this part, we get a point where there is triple phases. That is solid phase, liquid phase and gaseous phase. That phase is basically known as triple point. That is, that is a particular point where all phases are present together and that point is known as triple point. Now, this triple point for water basically comes at a range of 0 degree Celsius and 0 0.005 atm for water. Okay, this is for water. We have to remember if and the critical point of water is 220 atm that is much a greater pressure and 373 Kelvin. Though this temperature can be more and more but still 373 is the critical point. Now, moving from triple point to higher pressure solid liquid equilibrium to lower pressure solid vapor equilibrium. Okay, see another uh, phase diagram with this is particularly for water, right? So, this is the critical point. Actually, the critical point for the water is 374. It can be taken also, but we can also consider it as 220. So, variable times different depending upon the different literatures but more or less it is similar okay so this is the phase diagram particularly for water molecule this is a checkpoint take a screenshot and try to answer these questions based on the knowledge gained from today's video now this questions answer will be provided in the next video where we will also deal with the next topic that is surface tension of liquid state so this much for today thank you for watching do not forget to like Subscribe, share and comment.